times when I'm thinking about us Before we got lost and we parted Back to back we would carry on and We'd do anything for what we started But this time we could break What if, what if it was time for the news? Mm? Yeah, what if? Would that be good for you? <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. So I hope, I hope that would be good for you. Gonna, gonna even us up here. Hang on. Okay, ready. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome everybody to the FPV News. Uh, we are gonna bring you the latest developments in the world of FPV, and uh, and with any luck, there will be some rescued dogs by the end which is uh what i show up for every day um yeah <clears throat> by the way if you just... don't know some somehow you made it here you're joshua bardwell and i'm it's blunty and we're doing the news that's what you do at the beginning of a podcast slash live stream you introduce yourselves i am yes. joshua bardwell and you are it's blunty <laughs> and we are the hosts of the fpv news uh you just go on and on for like five minutes should we do our sponsor spot uh, before we get into the news, tonight's news is brought to you by no one, because we don't have sponsors. Nobody. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've been listening to some podcasts lately, uh, a new podcast by PJ Vote, if you know who he is. I don't know if you do. He, uh, he does, a, he does a, a, an intro, a teaser intro, and then he does an ad segment. I kind of don't mind it. I've been paying attention to which ads turn me off the most and which ads I don't mind. Uh, you know what I, but there's this other podcast I listen to that is like a minute and a half intro song that they think is great. And I'm just like, plus 15, plus 15, plus 15, plus 15. I just, I'm like, forget that nonsense. Anyway, um, <clears throat> let's do some news. Uh, let's we're going to go that. right, right into the stories, right? Yes. Boom. We're going to go right into the stories. And the first story is going to be kind of an interesting one. Cadex has sent out an email. And uh, some would call it cryptic. I might agree with yeah. that as, as it's, uh, I don't know. This is my 18 millionth time saying this, but please, foreign companies, hire someone speaking English as a first language to send out emails like this. It, it, you, you're making plenty of money. 
Uh, <laughs> anybody could re rewrite this to be coherent and understand what you're actually talking about. Instead, we're going to act confused because we are, and we're going to talk about this the best we can. Okay. Uh, if you actually want good feedback, you would do this. That's what I, that's my claim here. I mean, uh, so far, so far, I pretty much understand it. Yeah, right? We'll get there. We are planning to make a new camera. Right? What kind? No, no ambiguity there. Action camera? In order uh, to better understand walking? your camera needs and shooting scene expectations, that's a little clunky, shooting scene expectations, we sincerely invite you to participate in our questionnaire. A little clunky. Not... Okay, here we go. Where do you usually use it? Where do what I usually camera? use cameras? Well, I'm using cameras right now. I'm using a camera right here. Let's, let's, okay, it's Caddx. See, I was so about to say, be... can we assume it's a walk snail camera? But Caddx makes a lot of cameras. Caddx makes DJI cameras. They make walk snail cameras. It's they not make a DJI cameras, camera. And they've made an action camera before. So, like, what the heck are they asking about? Yeah. Is it, it, normally, the big question is, was... is it an FPV camera or an action camera? I think that's, I like that's the, the case. I think if we yeah. knew the answer to that question, we could probably give something, right? Which is yes. it? Do you know? No. It's not clear to me from reading this what they actually are asking for, which is a problem. <laughs> I don't know. I Did do you reach out to them? Want. Did you reach out to them and be like, hey, Caddix, what's your deal? No, I just got this. Oh, just got. we just got it. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's just roast him. <laughs> okay. I mean, um, yeah, it, it could really be either. It's... And the other thing is like this kind of like market research this th like questions like number two what problems have you encountered i don't that's like uh like i don't know do your job like really I, like you 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 can't like start by just i'll tell you what look at every review of your competitors cameras and make a list of the things the reviewer complained about and start there right what problems have you encountered with it? I, I don't know. Market research like this is kind of like, I don't know. You figure it out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, another part of this problem, I, again, I think like this is, this is a prime example of somewhere you need to use somebody with English as a first language who could have read this document. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to speak Chinese or any other language, right? You can just read this document and then go back and forth with someone and say, what did you actually mean by these questions? And then actually get a more coherent set of mm. questions that would be helpful to development. That would be my opinion. This is yeah. basically like, list everything about any camera you've ever used that might be helpful for us to make a new camera. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Captain Bry points out, thank you, Captain Bry, as always. If we make it into a bare shell form based on Insta Ace Pro, etc., how do you think the naked GoPro camera? So this is clearly, an act. now it's clearly an action camera, right? What are your expectations for waterproofness and battery life if it is an action camera? Okay, so clearly they're talking about action camera. Do you agree? Maybe. Not, I mean, not like, FPV if camera. it is an action camera, seems confusing, but sure. You know. I think I think that this is these questions imply that it's an action camera, not an FPV camera. So then, assuming but, that that's true, okay. how would we answer these questions? Right. I don't. You still like you're asking if you could name any action camera, what would you want? I yeah. don't, it's very confusing. It's just too like, open ended. Where do you use it? I don't know. Like the shower. <laughs> and I, I put it on FPV drones. Yeah. Really? Then, uh, you put it on FPV drones? How interesting. Like Tell me more about that. Like I Where believe I they're even it? asking for a price here. You know, twelve says based on your current needs, how much are you willing to accept? Is that the price? Like, I assume that means price, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um I don't, so like the answer is session, but they should know that it's not, it takes two seconds to find out that everybody wants a new session style camera. Yeah. But then the question is, can you actually make a good sensor? What are your limitations? You're asking us everything. You haven't yeah. told us like, here's what we could work inside of. Here's the sizes we have to use. Here's the cost the we can keep is, inside of. Here's the, what we could source. The, the other thing is that like, who is, what's the famous quote is if you ask the customer what he wants, is it like a Henry Ford quote or something? It's yeah. like trying to design a product based on a customer. A customer research survey needs to be extremely tightly tailored. Otherwise, customers will just tell you that they want. Yeah, I would like an 8K camera that weighs four grams and costs a dollar. Well, yeah. OK. OK. Thank you. That was so helpful. 
get out of here. Right? Yeah. We need some constraints here. We need some constraints. Like, yeah, it could be I multiple mean, choice. Right? Like, like, does anybody here want a session if it's just another Cadex Orca? Right? <laughs> yeah. Here, here's my first requirement. It has to fucking work. Yeah. Oh, Cadex Orca. Oops. Duh. Ooh. Whoa. We got everything right except that it works when you plug it in and power it up. Damn. <laughs> we were so close to a winner. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. My Cadex, my Cadex Orca was DOA. That's why I never ended up reviewing it. But apparently I wasn't alone on that. I'm sure not everyone's were DOA. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, how how important do you think camera image stability is? Well, if it's an action cam, that's like it's the whole thing, right? Like you're gonna you right. need some form of it stabilization. Needs gyro, like, needs gyro flow support minimum. Yeah. Like uh, yeah, these just seem like if they're designing an action cam and this is their list of questions, it worries me about what they would produce. <laughs> well, right? these questions. So here's my theory. Th this is not market research. This is marketing. They right. want people to know that they're working on a new action camera and they want people to feel like they give a shit what the people want. You know what would work way better? It's a teaser with a shadow and a question mark on it and you put it in random, you know what I mean? Like there's way better ways to do this. I feel like, like we might have roasted them for doing this at some point in the past. Are we can't be sure. But about we put that? it on the news, and it was much more. Well, we put this on the news. This, but yeah. and now we're arguing about it, and we don't even actually know what half like. What, what is what are they actually asking with number ten? How do you think the naked GoPro camera in FPV market? Okay, what you want? I mean, I, I see that like, what you're, the, you're, what, what that you're leaning mean? into like, the roast, but if, if I try to be sincere, I would yeah. answer that question by saying. Naked GoPros are appropriate for uh, situations where their lack of durability is outweighed by their lightweight. So like a Cinewhoop where you're not going to crash, but it's not they're not good for like a freestyle drone. So if you were to release a naked GoPro, like a, an, a, a durable action cam that is lower weight is good for freestyle. Naked GoPros focus towards cinematic use. The big problems with them are like powering them is kind of a pain in the ass. And they lack some features like Wi-Fi or microphone, right? Those are places you could improve. Like that's a sincere answer to that, to what I think that question is asking. Fair enough. No, you didn't like that. I just don't, I just think this seems extremely short-sighted no matter what the goal is. I agree. I think that, I agree. Like, but if you're going to, if you're going to like be angry and roast them, then I feel like I, that makes me want to try and be like, yeah. no, no, let's be reasonable. The, I mean, the answer is, like, none of this matters what we're going to answer because you have a set of limitations that we don't know about. Yeah. And you probably have something you're already cooking, which sounds like something inside of a bare shell form based Here, on Insta Ace Pro, right? Yes, of course. Of course. Here, here's a, here's a, I figured it out what the problem with this is, okay? Here's the problem with this. If f a Ford engineer were to come out and say, which of these features do you want in an engine? How do you feel about overhead valves, right? What, what, how many liters of displacement do you like the best? I'd be like, these are not questions that you should be asking in a marketing survey. Yeah. You know, you should, like, there are, is information you can get from a marketing survey, but that's not it. When they say, what do you think about naked GoPros? I'm like, you fucking make cameras. Yes. Don't you know the problems with naked GoPros? Like I just, I just instantly listed off the top of my head like three problems with naked GoPros that if you're trying to make a better naked GoPro, you could try and solve those problems. Why don't you already know that? What is the customer going to tell you about naked GoPros that you as a camera manufacturer shouldn't already know? And when you're talking about selling cars to an entire continent of people, there's a lot of things right. you may not know about their preferences. But when you're talking about selling an action camera to FPV enthusiasts, like I feel like you should be able to know the things that you need to know to make a successful camera. Like to me, um, this would be in infinitely different if you gave like, here's four options of things we're working on oh, with form factors sure. and ideas, right? Sure. Like which of these benefits you the most? Which do you not like? Why do you not like or like each one of them? Totally yeah. different, right? This is and like, don't we don't ask... know anything. Tell us info. Yeah. yeah, where do you usually use it? where the camera should be used. Like you didn't, and also you didn't ask like, what's your, 
who, what, how do you, you like you asked where do you use it maybe that covers this but like the answer given by somebody who shoots fpv freestyle is going to be very different than the answer of somebody who does downhill snowboarding than somebody who does like co car commercials or commercials right they're right. gonna have very different requirements you know um okay caddix here's what you need to do you need to make something as close to a GoPro Hero session as possible, but it needs to F and work, okay? It needs to be reliable out of the box. It needs to have gyro flow support. And I don't know why no one, none of these Chinese companies, sorry, they're Chinese companies. I don't want to overgeneralize. Why do none of these Chinese companies who make it lower priced action cameras, why do why can that none of them get their color science right? Why does the color look like just garbage on all of their cameras? Um, Insta360 comes close to having half decent color, but no one but GoPro can make an action camera that has half decent color, and I have no idea why. Because they're all using the same freaking Amberella chipset or whatever, right? I don't know. That's what you need to do. Get on it. 4K, so, 4K is probably the minimum people would really want. Most people don't really need it, but they want 4K. Go ahead, sorry. Right. Uh, so... If we think, talk about things that I don't see listed here really that are like actual issues for, like one of the things people got really mad about and also liked with Insta360 was that they have their own editing software and pipeline and you don't have to set a lot of things in the system. You set it in the editor export tool, right? In the app. Yep. And then you can export how you need it. Gives you flexibility uh, in post that you didn't bake those changes in. Yeah. I do like we that. want CADEX to make another app that's similar to that that works no. for their cameras? They'll do a bad job. They'll do a terrible job. Of it. So this is the kind of feedback I think they actually need, right? Do not yeah. make something special. Don't make a crazy app. Make an yeah. exportable, normal video that works with normal gyro data that can be put into gyro flow without any issues or encoding problems or whatever will happen, right? And yeah. that is easy to handle and work with. Yeah, love it. Yeah. Um, Canix is the king of getting user feedback and then not doing anything with it. Like, and, and by the way, sometimes they do things with user feedback, but they're kind of like, they, they, they will tease seven different products and deliver two of them. And that's good because right. a lot of companies wouldn't deliver any of them. But like, they're just constantly, they're like your needy, your needy friend who's never like, what do you like me? What do you want to do this weekend? They're just constantly asking for validation, you know? Anyway. Um. I've no, I know people have mentioned that they've teased some 4K moonlight camera and yes. people are trying to figure out like if this is like marketing for that, like trying to figure out if this is related to that or not, or if this is strictly like action cam related. If you look at the Insta Ace Pro, that's basically like a, a big GoPro. It's like a normal yeah. GoPro yeah. size, you know? Yep. So I don't know. Hmm. Anyway. All right. All right. Well, um, we, we hope they make feedback. a session that's as yeah. good as a session. They won't. Uh, if they you can't. make another fact, okay, the, let's say this. They could, make a, they, make... they could make something as good as a run cam orange. They'd be doing all right. <laughs> Do we I'm want sorry. that? Somebody does. Is it is it worth them producing that product? Like, If they make if... a camera that is slightly better than a run cam orange at a, a similar price, a lot of people would buy it. A lot of people still fly and, the run cam orange. I and mean, I think the other question we have to ask out of here is if they produced a Insta Ace Pro sized camera, so mm -hmm. like a GoPro sized camera, mm -hmm. what would it have to do to make us not buy a GoPro? It has to be extremely cheap. It would be, it would right? be, the, the problem is that in order to get it down to the price it would need to be at to make it worth buying that instead of a GoPro, it would have to be so shitty that it wouldn't be worth buying. And I, uh, that's my opinion. Yeah. And then the I'm other a, question they ask is about naked yeah. GoPros. So like if you made some naked version of it, does that really help anything? Because we could also just get a naked GoPro and it's probably going to cost, naked, uh, yeah. you know. Yeah. So I, don't I feel know like stuff. the naked GoPro segment has more room for someone to come in and create value. Whereas the full size GoPro segment is pretty dominated by GoPro. That's my take. The, the, the other question I think is worth asking. Uh, I find myself flying without a GoPro more and more since digital uh, digital video systems. I mean, if you're flying with an O3, arguably there's very little motivation to go with a GoPro if all you're doing is making content for YouTube, if you're not like a professional. Um, and I think more and more people are just using DVR and not bothering with a GoPro, but, you know, so there's also that in the mix. Um, okay, let's move on. 
we spent 20 minutes okay. talking about this. I think we're good. Cool. Uh, crossfire! Crossfire! I'm going to say the teaser clickbait opening, and then you can tell the real story. Ready for it? I know, okay. I know, I know you're going to hate All it. Right. That's why I'm warning you at okay. the audience. Hey, Crossfire is open source now, everybody! Anybody can write Crossfire code. You can flash Crossfire to an Express LRS receiver. TBS has done it. They open sourced it. Yeah! Woo! -hoo! Yay! No? No. Okay. So, yeah. Now you're going to confuse everybody. So, yeah, first I know. of all... I told you it was, it was not... I told you what I was doing before I did it. <laughs> this is, it's more confusing than I thought you were going to make it. So, um, well, you're welcome. First of all, this, is, this has nothing to do with Crossfire. This is CRSF, which is the protocol. What does CRSF that, stand for, Blunty? Uh, presumably Crossfire, but if you crossfire. say Crossfire, it means a radio link and not the oh, protocol. Oh, so it does have something to do with Crossfire. Okay, thank you. No, it has something to do with TBS. That's what I would say. Okay. Okay. So CRSF is the protocol uh, that you talk to between the module and the radio. Uh -huh. So when you plug a mo when you plug your module in, like your Express LRS module or your Crossfire module, it's going to communicate with CRSF mm -hmm. through to the radio. Mm -hmm. Previously... The CRSF protocol has been totally handled by TBS, and it's been internal. There's no actual documentation other than a little bit of old documentation that existed. Um, and uh, basically, the whole community's kind of just been using it as they can, but there's been no real progress on improving it because it's TBS. So mm -hmm. um, we've linked a GitHub uh link from the freedom tx server mm -hmm. uh freedom tx github um where there's been some discussion between trappy and a bunch of other community members and uh, long story short trappy's continued to stall like he always does on everything um yeah, so the community's taking our, it into their own hands to document to that's our official position as journalists semi-journalists yeah trappy has continued to stall like he always does that's that's yes that's, do we have edge okay. on freedom tx radios nope okay he's yes it's all like he always does that's what we i'm don't. gonna say we don't we don't okay um um cool so just like oh, these other promises this has not happened yet but the community is taking it upon themselves i believe captain bry has done a lot of this work along with Raphael kolefic from the edge tx group mm -hmm. um and they've documented as much as they know about crsf the hope is that tvs will come in and clear it up well, to make sure that it's correct uh, because yeah. they only know so much about it um, and then the community yeah, so, will so, work so together the quickest, some... the quickest way to get corrected is to say something wrong that's what that's yes. going on here? Got it Yeah, well the community had been waiting for a while for TBS to share documentation on CRSF and instead yeah. they've just gone through and documented themselves and so, hope the TBS will correct it. So we've got TBS Crossfire which is this whole ecosystem of hardware firmware that runs on the module and runs on the receivers and the CRSF protocol that is used to communicate between the radio, the module, and the receiver. And what we've seen is that like Express LRS has borrowed the CRSF protocol since Betaflight already supports it, since everybody already supports it. They were just they just basically reverse engineered it and they use it not over the air, but just between the receiver and the flight controller and between the radio and the module, right? And the idea is sure. that they're taking all this reverse engineered stuff and they're putting it out there on a, on a wiki so anybody or a GitHub so that anybody can take advantage of it. Right, about right? right. And yeah, um, and so this new project is on under a GitHub called CRSF WG. Mm -hmm. uh, it's currently called CRSF Working Group uh will likely be renamed since crsf is uh probably in like tbs's rights because they've been using mm -hmm. it for so long yeah so um yeah the goal here is basically for them to get it fully documented tbs to go yes this is well, correct yeah and then they can start adding things onto the protocol that people have been requesting like different features speedy things uh different hooks and and different things that would help out everybody to make a more robust version of the protocol and this is nice because, like, there are people out there like Betaflight developers who have to implement Crossfire and uh, Express Express de developers who implement it. They know some things about this protocol. And it seems like basically what's happened here is that the people who know these things are now just documenting them for anyone to see. And uh, I wonder, though, like, what is... TBS going to do or what have they done 
because like do, do, do they are they cool with like what if immersion rc released a ghost receiver that ran crossfire uh to the and they were like yeah we've gotten rid of the ghost protocol it's called crossfire now what if uh free sky released a receiver that ran the crossfire protocol I like know, but express lrs does already i'm confused what you're saying i know express lrs does already i know that and so far tbs has not like been like hey don't do do that but like Express LRS is open source, and I don't know. Like, could could TBS go after Radio Master and saying you're shipping a product that implements our intellectual property? My point is this: the reason this is not hypothetical. That is a hundred percent what TBS did, and this was five more more years ago. Times change and people change. I'm not trying to say, I'm not trying to like stir, stir the pot, but when Race Day Quads released the Mach Two, I think it was video transmitter. It supported it implemented smart audio and it did that by reverse engineering the protocol and it didn't steal any intellectual property reverse engineering a protocol is not so you have to steal the actual code right and and trappy lost his mind and and uh never uh talked to tyler brennan again metaphorically speaking so like have they said anything about this yeah no yeah. i mean uh... I mean, Trappy has said over and over that he will help, and this has been going on for a year, and he doesn't have time, and things are changing, and yeah, oh, we okay. got to do this, and oh, I have two more months, and oh, I've got to do this, and oh, there's big changes, and it's yeah. just you could go read the thread. It's over and over. Like every time TBS or Trappy responds anywhere with help, mm -hmm. it's the same BS that we've seen about Edge TX for years but now. He is, on he is at Radio. least at least uh, ostensibly he is okay and on board with this project, documenting the protocol right, what, and other people using the protocol. It, sort of. I mean, it looks like he's trying to con maintain control of the protocol. Like some of his responses seem like, okay, great, we'll work together and figure out what we need to add. But that's not what the people are saying. It's, it's like, like we're not we're not adding things. We're doing things. We are doing things. You can help if you want, yeah. but we're not going to talk about what we are not going to do. Yeah. So again, yeah. this was stalled waiting to do all the documentation, and then Captain Bry and Raphael went in there and just knocked it out. So they're they've done a bunch of okay. documentation now, not instead of waiting on TBS to do this. Okay. So hopefully TBS will approve it, but I think no matter what, this will move forward, and there yeah. will be an open CRSF. Uh, and that's whatever great it's called. because because honestly, yeah. Crossfire is a great wire protocol. It's great. Yes. In the air, it's a little bit bulky, and that's why Crossfire only goes to 150 hertz, and Express LRS goes higher um uh but uh as a wire protocol it's fantastic it's already supported by a million different things and it's totally totally uh great that they're doing this um but to be clear you will not be able to flash custom firmware to a crossfire receiver or module that code is not open source just the protocol is, is being reverse engineered and documented yeah, not the OTA protocol. We're talking about the protocol that mm -hmm. goes from the receiver to the flight controller and from the module to the radio. So. Sky Sailor says Race Day Quads carries TBS now. Hang on. I think they probably got stock in because they partnered with that other company. TBS but maybe they Campania, made it. Grip Tape, TBS Pod Racer, Happy Model in stock. Where did TBS Crossfire Micro? <gasps> oh my God! Yeah, they've had these since they got that other company. When, when <gasps> we did that story, they partnered with that other company to share stock, and now they can list that. T I wonder if I wonder if Trappy's would cut off that other company. He really doesn't like Tyler. Well, he didn't. Yeah. Or he did. made up, and we you know, don't it's, know about it's it. been a, it's been a long time, and I shouldn't I shouldn't assume like uh, that nothing has changed. Maybe things have changed. Maybe Trappy's, you know, fully on board with this. And uh, maybe he made up with Tyler and they're selling. Anyway, uh, let's let's go to the next story. All right. Next up, uh, Trip, Trip Simulator, Simulator has gotten an update. Uh, and some people say it flies better and some say it flies worse, which I think is kind of how updates go. But uh, Trip has put out a new update. They say it is using much more accurate physics. They've been using real beta flight PID loops. Claiming they're the first, I don't know that that's the case, but they're, they're claiming they're the first with true beta flight PID loops, and um, they have new UI, UX, and spots and stuff. Um, so yeah, we wanted to let you know that they did this update, and you might want to check it out if you haven't checked it out in a while. I've seen a lot of mixed reports. A lot of people saying it's amazing and perfect now. A lot of people saying it's terrible and they ruined the game. Have you tried it? Um, 
No, I have not tried it yet. Hmm. Uh, we should try it. One thing I'll one thing I'll say is uh, a lesson we maybe could learn, and and something I'm thinking about because we've talked about uh, possibly doing another simulator roundup. I'll tease that, but. I say possibly because we don't know if we're going to do it or not. So I'm not saying we're promising Probably to do it. I'm saying we no. might do it. Here come the call. When, when, when's the simulator round up coming out? I heard you'd already done it. When then, you they can go back, then they can go back to watch this and see that I said we're possibly I doing it. I know. I okay. know. Okay, go ahead. Um, but one thing, one factor. That always uh, works. This game called The Finals just came out. The uh, Finals. Yeah, and the finals is a free-to-play game, uh, and it was in beta for a while. It's a shooting game with three players. Anyway, so the finals came out, and they got review bombed on Steam. It was overwhelmingly negative, or at least uh, like largely negative. And all the comments were, "Why did you slow the game down? This game felt really fast and exciting during beta, and now it feels like you slowed it down, and it's super sluggish. Why did you do that?" And they got horribly review bombed. And they're and like, the we, did, we, "We didn't do that." And then the developer right. put out a statement and said, actually, it's exactly the same speed as beta, but we changed the FOV to be lower by default. Yep. Big effect. And now suddenly, all the reviews are mostly impo mostly positive, and everybody figured out that, oh, I just needed to move the FOV slider up, and I was wrong. Nothing mm -hmm. changed. Mm -hmm. So in saying that, I think we should consider things like, did other graphics settings change? Did other options change? Did performance change? And that changed your effect of the game? And do you do the same thing between all the games? Do you set the same FOVs? And, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know. There's a lot of things like that I think we should also consider that maybe you don't with a simulator. So yeah. uh, just something to think about. Okay. Um, well, I can't wait to try it out. Yeah. Uh, we got an event we're going to talk about. Uh, oh, I have to get the events title up. Events. We got some events. Uh, what's the first one, Blunty? All right, first up is the Tiny Whoop Open. Jesse Perkins is putting on an official Tiny Whoop event. This is the second one, I believe, uh, that's happened, and it's over in Denver on 420 and 421. Uh, they're having a, a big old party. It's the biggest uh, Tiny Whoop Raceway, uh, biggest Whoop House uh, mm -hmm. for, on 420 weekend. Earlier, Jesse told me there were 11 tickets available, so if you wanted to go, you should go ahead and book that ticket now. Yeah, uh, Jesse Perkins throws a hell of an event. He throws a hell of a race. He also throws a hell of a party. Uh, if if you were like, I can honestly say that it his events should be near the top of your list of well, maybe I'll go, maybe I won't go. Um, like, and and es especially in a lot of ways, I think you're going to have more fun at a Tiny Whoop event than at a like a like something like IO. Uh, and frankly, the Tiny Whoop tent is one of the most fun parts of I.O. Because like Tiny Whooping, you're racing and you're competing, which is fun, but also it's Tiny Whoop. So like how seriously could you really take it? And usually you're indoors. So you can if you if you choose to, you can drink, you know, and you can eat like it's just it's just so much fun. Uh, so uh, highly, highly recommend it. Um, Denver, your your old stomping ground, wasn't it? Yep, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah uh, okay. it's always a good time up there, like you said, with Jesse, and uh, it should be a, a fun party. So, yeah, uh, you know, I think, like you alluded to, essentially with Tiny Whoops, you can kind of just like fly them all around and loop people and have fun with big quads. You're like all doing channel management and trying to figure out if everybody can fly, and you mm -hmm. got to figure out time and space and don't hurt anybody and all those things, right? It's just a lot more fun uh, with Tiny yeah. Whoops. So. Yeah, for sure. We've got another event. It, why is there no link for it? Is there no link for it, Plenty? We are announcing this race uh, because so okay. that's why there's no link. I was told before the official announcement of the race okay. um, that uh, well, there is a. You heard it here first. <laughs> yeah, there is a Street League uh, 2024 National Series Race Two. So we already talked about race one at the ranch, February 16th through the 18th. This is race two. It's going to be in Houston, Texas, March 8th through the 12th. Um, and we still have some schedule on that. Uh, we know that race three will be in May on the West Coast. They haven't nailed that down yet. And race four is in Ohio at the Sandusky Speedway, August 31st to September 2nd. And the championship will be in Colorado, August 4th to the 6th. If you need those dates, those are down in the description of the show. Um, and they'll be posting okay. more about those pretty soon uh, on their website. All right. Great. Um, next up, it is time. It's time to pay the bills. It's time it to is. pay the bills by plugging our pluggables. Uh, and the first one is 
my website, fpvknowitall.com, home of the ultimate FPV shopping list, where you can get suggestions for, I got to I got to, I, I, every time we look at it, I'm like, ooh, I got to add this. I got to add that. So let's look at a page that I won't think that about. Uh, tools. Tools. Yes. Suggested tools. Right? Soldering irons. What soldering irons should you get? Soldering irons. Uh, solder practice boards. Multimeters. This little portable multimeter is a freaking baller. Like, it's such a tiny little thing, and it's so capable. Love it. It's just full of cool things like that. And uh, you can check it out. Oh, do you still get this? I bet that's... No, we have to we have to remove that. Okay, well, we'll get right on that. Anyway, fpvknowitall.com. Whenever you're looking for stuff to get in any of these categories, check it out. Um, yeah, we've also got itsblunty.com, which is my web plate, where you can go check out a link for my Patreon if you want to support me on Patreon, or you can uh, check out my troubleshooting. I've got a description there. If you click on troubleshooting of all the different uh, you know, troubleshooting services I provide, what I can and can't do, a lot of people are confused about that. 50 bucks an hour is there for you. Um, and you just send me a message on Discord when you're ready to schedule something up. Yeah, yeah. I send people your way, people who want one-on-one -on -one help, but I'm like, I don't have time to do this. Go help. And you're, uh, you're, you're just as good as I am. Just as good. Just as smart. Um, we want to let you know about the Joshua Bardwell live stream, live stream, live stream clips channel. <laughs> Joshua Bardwell live stream clips where there are clips and highlights from my live streams. Oh, look, we're clickbaiting Linus Sebastian. Oh, well, we did talk about a Linus video. But this, look, this video is going to get more views because Linus is actually, it's not. Wow. Well, that wow. was six hours ago, so it might. No, that was two weeks ago. Yeah, no, it's going to crush. No, we are, but it's not clickbait because it's true. Um, yeah, so uh, get subscribed over there if you're not already subscribed. And f don't miss a single highlight of, of my live streams. Last up, we want to let you know about Search FPV. You know, I just showed you FPV Know It All, which is a list of products. But sometimes you know what product you want and you don't know where to find it, searchfpv.com. Just pick a region. You could pick worldwide. You could pick North America, whatever. Pick the region that you're in and type in what you are looking for. Goggles X, Waxenel Goggles X. Let's see. You can even search for in stock only if you're tired of stuff being out of stock. And uh, just find the prices. Yup. Any minute now. There we go. You can find what's in stock and how much it costs at a whole bunch of different stores. Um, that's our plugs. Boom. Plugs. Done. Yeah. Man, we're good at this. I just got a Steam right. notification that you were playing the finals. Did did you, while I was doing plugs, did you just fire up a match? <laughs> no, maybe you just opened Steam for the first thing in a while. Oh, maybe so. I, I played it a few days ago. So. Those Steam notifications are really useless. Yeah. True. Emaster YT thinks the FPV Know It All site needs a lot of updates. Hey, uh, I would love for you to DM me the things you think uh, need to be changed. Sometimes there's something we've overlooked. I mean, we're constantly updating it. Sometimes uh, you have an opinion we don't share. And sometimes I'll go, oh, you know, you're right. That is That does need to be updated. So... I would love to get your feedback, Emaster YT, or anybody out there uh, who thinks that there's a product on there that shouldn't be on there or the product that we need to add. Uh, more than happy. In fact, frankly, I'm sincerely grateful for you doing free work for me to help my website stay up to date. So by all means, uh, DM me or email me, jb at joshuabardwell.com with any, any thoughts. Uh, okay. Continuing on. Let's see. It's this one. Yeah. We got a new website yeah. to help tell you where you're not allowed to fly. Everywhere. Yeah. So uh, we want to let you know that Before You Fly used to be a website you could go to to kind of get an idea of where you could fly. Um, there's also an app, a companion app for that. Mm -hmm. They are transitioning away from uh, Before You Fly. And they've launched a new website called Aeroware. That's aeroware.aloft.ai, uh, where you can see that same similar map. Um, they're also launched Aeroware in the iOS App Store and Google Play Store. 
Um, it looks like these will eventually be places where Lance will be approvable. This is essentially the exact same thing where you normally would get approval. And even if you click, it kind of lets you like start to get approval. Um, but actually, if you try to do Lance with these, they will not let you. And you still need to use air control for Lance. So. Hmm. But yeah, if you need to know where you can fly, this is a good tool to do that. So you can at least figure out where you're going to be. And then, uh, mm. but yeah, you'll ultimately need to go into uh, air control and do the mm. approval for Lance. Hmm. Looks like I'm not allowed to fly here. How Shocked. about that? How about that? Well, what if I just zoom out? Oh, no, there's a whole bunch of no fly zones here. Oh, man. <laughs> well, it's nice to know where you're not supposed to fly, but the inability to request Lance approval, like the the Kitty Hawk app, and now it now it's called the freaking Loft whatever, like the apps where you could not only look up the no fly zones, but also then like if you're in Class D airspace, you can request Lance approval. Like the fact that this doesn't do that is kind. Of, but then the Before You Fly app didn't do it either, and it was kind of useless. So yeah, isn't there? Yeah. That's mm -hmm. why that's the replacement for that and not air control. So currently, you're still going to go to air control if you want to request. Notify and fly. Oh, pff. this is yeah, dumb. Click, on the left can... side. <laughs> yeah. On the left Lance. side, there's that blue button, and that's how you okay. actually get to air control. And then you would sign in there. And then oh, you can okay. Well, requests. at least they link it. But this notify and fly sure sounds like I'm getting Lance approval. I know it says it's not. Just share your increased situational awareness and the safety. That's such a bullshit. <laughs> hey, just want to let you know that I'm flying here. Yeah, let me get right on that. Let's have a right. Hang on. I'm going to. No, 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 no. Here's where I am. Right here. Okay, great. Uh, and next, uh, select type of flight. Uh, recreational ceiling. 5,000 feet. Oh, ceiling 400 feet. Duration 9999. Nine, nine, nine. Okay, 60 minutes is the max. Great. Good to know. Start time and radius 9999. Nine, 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 nine. 8,000 feet. Great. Good to know. Okay, and I am not a robot and uh, file my flight. My flight was successfully filed. Cool. I just, uh, let's do it again. <laughs> What a bunch of bullshit. Right. Oh, yeah. I'm definitely flying in the national airspace. Great. Um, so just go, right. to, go to the Lance site, right? That's what you're going to do. Yeah. Uh, but now you know that exists and may be usable for more later. But, yeah. It could be. It, I, still, so. I still use the Before You Fly app to know. Like, if I'm at a location where I don't intend to request authorization... Then I'll look at the Before You Fly app to see if I'm supposed to fly there or not. And it doesn't matter. They can't give me Lance. Okay. Um, All right. Next up, it's, it's barely, barely news. news. Barely news. Where we, do, we do little stories uh, or stories that aren't that exciting, but uh, we wanted to let you know about them. We put them here uh, to, to slap some extra stuff on at the end that you might want to know about. You know, normally we would do super chats before we do It's Barely News, but oh, we're not going to do right. that today. And do you know why? We don't have any. That's not true. We do. They just hadn't oh. loaded yet. So we are going to do it. I was wrong. Okay. Fair Thank enough. you, Parkour Guy, for a $5 super chat. Did you ever cover the Speedy B F4 with the fixed SD card black box issue that the V3 had, plus other great fixes? No, I didn't cover it. I never covered the SD card issue either. I mentally noted that they'd done it. But I didn't. Should we put in the news somewhere that the Speedy B V4 fixed the issue? That might be a newsworthy I, story. I think we might have done that. That's the kind of thing we would have done. Yeah, I'm let's not sure, check. but I think we might have. So. If not, let's put it in next next week's news. Okay, okay what is the news? That the Speedy B F4 V4 fixes the problems that the V3 had with the SD card. Okay. What's that? 
when you I put an SD some board has been fixed but if you're saying a new board doesn't have a problem an old board is who cares like I yeah but it's just what... they just sell it as the speedy B there's people out there who might be thinking oh I'm not buying speedy B the OSD doesn't work when you insert an SD card I'll be like hey guys that's fixed I maybe I'll put that on the maybe list how about that all right good enough Thank you, Parkour okay. Guy, for your super chat. Kim Fused and Garderoder, thank you for both giving us a $20 super chat. That's 20 for you and 20 for me, and Merry Christmas from them. Merry Christmas to you guys as well. Uh, Kim says, Merry Christmas, JB and Blunty. Thanks for always being super entertaining and informative. And Garderoder says, it's Christmas, and all I got you guys was this crummy super chat. Yeah. Yeah, Garderoder. Just giving us money for Christmas. That's so impersonal. I hope nobody else does that. I want personalized gifts that show that you truly know and appreciate my special individuality as a person and not filthy money. How about you, Blondie? You okay with money? You're not actually yeah. super interested in money, to I'm be honest. Not, but free money's fine. You know what I mean? Free but money like, you'll take. Yeah. Yeah. But no, I'm not interested in money. Would you like a sincere gift that shows that someone, you know, recognizes who you are as a person? No. No, I, I mean, just maybe, would find but... First of yeah. all, your chances of getting it right are so low. Gifts are bad for the economy. So low. If you want, if you want, like, you, the average gift, I believe, is like 20%. Uh, you lose 20% of the value purchase of the gift because the average of gift giving and people not wanting things and things like that. I was listening I to uh, what you're talking about. You're talking about, about people buy a gift and then it gets returned or discarded. And on average, when you give someone a or, gift, 20% of the value of the gift is wasted. Correct. If they had, if you had just given them money or mm -hmm. if they had just bought their own thing, then that right. money would have all gone to something of value for that person. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I shouldn't say this because uh you know it, like i meet people i i want to distinguish between gifts different kinds of gifts if i'm at an event like rotor right rampage and someone comes up to me and says like here's one here's an example of, of what i'm talking about this just happens to be on my desk right now a person sent me this it is i think it's native american beadwork his girlfriend made this this is i'm not sure the camera's picking it up this is like hundreds of tiny little beads that she beaded into this thing and they sent it to me and like literally it's so oh, it is a uh, willpower fpv thank you willpower fpv it's literally just sitting on my desk because i don't know what to do with it but i i really appreciate the thoughtfulness and time that went into it that kind of gift if you give me that kind of gift thank you i appreciate it i have a piece of original art you know but then there's different kind of gift where somebody is like, well, it's his birthday. I guess I got to get him something. I don't know. What the frick would he want? Uh, okay, I guess this. Just just don't. Just don't. Like your chances of giving me something that I'll be sincerely happy is in my life are so low. Because you just, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't want to sound like a, like a Grinch, but it's true. So, yeah, I'm with you. Give me money. I, Give I've, me money. I, I linked a video in the Discord if anybody wants to watch it by A. Kelly or Astra that talks about yeah. Christmas economics. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, she goes into a pretty heavy deal. A 51 minute video about Christmas wow. economics. Wow. I also struggle, and this is a tougher one. I struggle with social interactions. Like, if my wife gives me a gift, chances are she's figured out something I want and I already have an intimate relationship with her. Uh, but if like an acquaintance gives me a gift, like Bunty, even you and I are fairly, we're fairly well acquainted, maybe even friends. But if you were to be like, hey, I got you something on some level, I would be like, oh, no. <sighs> because I'd be super anxious that I wasn't going to like what you gave me. And then I'd have to pretend to like it. And it would or I wouldn't pretend to like it or there's the whole thing. I would have a panic attack the minute you said that. Uh -huh. I know better than all that. Like, so if I ever right. want to give you a gift, it would be something I know you want. You would like. definitely, you would nail it. You're right. But yeah. And, and that's the only reason I would ever do it. And it would probably yeah. be alcohol. That would be my guess. It's fair. That's fair. You could probably you like could you'll do use it. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. What kind of alcohol would yeah. you get me? Probably like bourbon, but I don't yes. know. Okay. It's a safe bet. That's a safe bet. I would probably. Yeah. Anyway. Um, thank you for the gifts. 
little little sidebar there. Thank you for the super chats. Um, there's times though, like I love getting gifts from my kids. You know, I love getting gifts from well, my kids. So, kids, kids will like yeah, whatever the should, fuck you get them. You should watch this video. <laughs> it's a really good video. And even she even mm. talks about that kind of stuff. It's like, yes, giving kids gifts to kids is great, and kids are much easier to buy for, but also. They need to be your kids or kids you know or related to, right. or otherwise it's going to be shitty generic gifts anyway. And you may That's even waste true. more money on kids. That's true. Because they might not care at all about what you got them if it was bad. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah. I get my kids things that I probably was going to get them anyway, but I just save it till Christmas. <laughs> my mom sent us cash. She was like, here's cash. Get the kids whatever they want. I'm like, yes, mom. You got it. That's what they're doing. Um, I had an idea. I, I hope this person isn't watching the stream. They probably aren't. I had another person who is close to me who I feel like, you know, I want to get him something for Christmas. And I couldn't think of like what would the right thing to be. And then I realized that like maybe like a shopping spree, like if what they want is clothes or makeup or jewelry like that, they'll actually wear and use, but I can't buy it for them. Maybe we should go out and like do a shopping spree together. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. Experiences. All right. Uh, okay. 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 Moving on. Toxic Red. Thank you for a $10 super chat. I have the HDO 2.1 goggles. What's the best way to go digital and not be disappointed? I have only ever flown analog FPV. Uh, I'm going to give you a short answer because we're coming to the end of the stream. It's going to be a little bit incomplete, but mostly correct in my opinion. Uh, by the walk snail digital receipt, by the walk snail receiver, and get a walk snail video transmitter and you probably are going to have an experience you're going to be happy with or at least not too unhappy with you're not going to get the absolute lowest latency because you'll be at 100 you'll be at 60 frames per second instead of 100 frames per second but that's okay you're still going to get a pretty good experience and probably it's going to be all right that's what do you also, think? think that's good advice yeah just for posterity the HDO2 had a problem with burning out HDMI, so if you have an older one or that has been replaced, the know HDMI that that board. might happen, but I believe they are replacing those HDMI boards, so um, once you get a replace one, it won't be an issue. Okay, great. Um, Vicky Berratti, thank you for 50 MYR. Hmm. Uh, Malaysian Ringgit, thank you for those, and Merry Christmas to you. Hate Eternal Maver. Thank you for one euro. No question, just a euro. Thank you for a euro. Don Dupuis, thank you for a $5 super chat. Solved my issue on live stream the other night. Just a small thanks. Thank you, Don. And Eric Toff, thank you for a $50 super chat. Merry Christmas from you. Eric, this is going to be the situation where the brothers just pass the same $50 bill around in a circle and say Merry Christmas to each other. Now that you live in Knoxville, well, not Knoxville, but you live relatively close. Uh, I'm just going to take you out somewhere and spend that fifty dollars uh, buying you a drink, or more, probably more than one drink. Uh, so uh, thank you for the donation, but trust me, you're not getting one over on me like that. Um, and that's it for the super chats. As long as no more come in, let's do it's barely news. All right, it's barely news, and it's a pretty barely barely news today. We've got three stories, and they're not super exciting, but we did want to let you know about them. The first oh. one is. Uh, we've got <laughs> Snoopy flying. I, thought was I love cool. this. I love this so much. <laughs> I love this. Oh God, the head is actuated. I love this so much. I love this so much. I did not expect how much I was going to love this. I think I'm not sure how common this is also, but for most for people who can't see, this is essentially a quad inside of uh, this house uh -huh. hill, and then the quad is propelling forward sideways and sort of yeah. using the house as a wing, and it's surprisingly stable. Yeah, I mean, it sort of translations from vertical to semi-horizontal flight. I love that the head moves, and it looks like he's really flying it. This is a this is great. The head is on its own gimbal, too. It's not even like when he banks left, he turns his head left. Oh, my goodness. That's fantastic. I'm so happy to have seen that. Um, cool. Next up. All right. Next up, we've got... Uh, we've talked about the Ingenuity Copter that was, has was been on Mars, still is on Mars. Uh, and NASA has now donated uh, the prototype for the Ingenuity to the Smithsonian. So if you're ever... 
that way. If you ever wanted to check it out, you could probably do that. Uh, and it's pretty cool that it gets uh, put into the annals of history. The what? The annals of history. There you go. You got to see it's a, it's uh, it's an important distinction. <laughs> Don't get us demonetized. <laughs> okay. And last up, last up. Yes, it's true. We have another story of rescued Unfortunately. dogs. Dogs being rescued by drones. Yeah. You know, um, in the first little clip here, we've got them uh, honing in on the spot. This is actually like the last few minutes of their of their trip here. And you can see he actually <gasps> ends up finding him. This whole video kind of covers the whole process. I think this is neat because we often don't get to see how the process and how long it takes and what the results are and all those kind of things. But this kind of goes uh -huh. through the whole thing of them searching for, yeah. finding, using thermal to scan the areas, identify different animals and figure out what's what. Um, I, I, I love this shot. Hang on. Where's the thermal shot? Hang on. He goes to the the uh, visible camera, visible light camera. And then as we cut away here, we've got the thermal shot. It's so, I mean, I, I know this is the whole point of thermal, but when you look in thermal and you just clearly, bing, see that dot there, right? And then it switches to visible and it's like, you would never spot that. It's yeah. so cool to me how things jump out in thermal. You know? we, we At this point, we kind of take it for granted because we've seen so many of these things happen. But like mm -hmm. the uh, amount for search and rescue of animals and people, the thermal helps out and makes people savable that and animals savable that weren't. It's just yeah. incredible. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and here's the moment when the doggo gets rescued. Yay. Yeah, two doggos. Oh, two doggos get rescued. Yay. Poor doggos. Just out there in the woods didn't know what to do with themselves, you know. And now they're with their person and they get to come home. And hopefully eat a sausage and maybe get a bath. They look filthy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Come on. Yeah, yeah. DJI saved a doggo. Good stuff. Good stuff. Thank you, Blinty. That was that's well worth well worth sitting through. Um cool. Well that's gonna do it yeah. for the news. Yeah, this is a, a service announced, public service, whatever you want to call it. We'll be gone for a couple of weeks from the news uh, for the holidays. Yes. Um, Here. But if you have news, send it in to news at fpvknowitall.com down there in the corner of the screen. Um, and we'll get to it when, we, when we're back. Yeah, if we take a look here, if you go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Joshua Bardwell, at Joshua, whatever. Uh, if you go to my YouTube channel, there's a section there, live. And you can see I've scheduled the upcoming live streams through the end of the year. And so if you're not sure, and by, I don't know, people are like, when do you stream? And I'm like, do you not know that this page exists? And I guess the answer is no, they don't. So uh, news. Uh, but I've scheduled through the end of the year. You can see I've got one for December 24th and one for December 31st. Uh, but obviously, uh, if you look at the calendar, you'll see that uh, the 25th Christmas is a Monday. And so we won't be doing the news on the 26th. Uh, and then obviously, uh, the first is new year's day. And so we'll take the first and the second off as well. And, uh, you know, as, as it were, uh, so, um, cool. Well, I hope you have a great holiday, Blunty. I will, um, I guess I won't see you. Uh, you know, no, you help me with the regular live streams. I'll, yeah, see, well, you. I'll see you Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Well, that's <laughs> nice. I will hear you. I won't see you technically. That's correct. That's true. All right, guys, you guys, everybody else out there as well, have a great holiday. I'll see you on Sunday for the next stream, but not the news. And uh, that's going to do it. We're out of here. Bye. Yeah. Bye.